what on earth is happening with West Ham and are they going to sack their manager? What do West Ham fans appreciate about Tomáš Soček? Is it all over at West Ham for Vladimir Tsofal? And what does it mean if things go tits up? Hello everyone. Are you ready for your weekly dose of football and English? Well, make yourself comfortable, sit back, strap in and enjoy this episode. My name is Denek Lukas. I'm a professional English teacher and my guest today is a passionate football fan and I believe an ex-footballer as well. Welcome yeah. to the podcast, Clive. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, ex-amateur footballer. Let's put that in there. Well, <laughs> we have that in common. <laughs> yeah. I'm exactly the same. But it doesn't prevent us from talking about football and the Premier League. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Well... Uh, you're brave because as a West Ham fan, I think you're going through some sort of crisis these days. Looking at the table, you are in the 14th place, which is not what I think you guys, you fans of West Ham, wanted at the beginning of the season. Indeed not, no. Um, we were looking to improve on the season we had last season, which wasn't exactly great. Um, the season before, league-wise, wasn't great. Um, yes, we won the Conference League, but our league performances have been adequate and nothing mm. better. Mm. Um, and this season, I think we've been below adequate. A lot, yeah. Yeah, a, a good distance below, you know. And yet, somehow... I think people expect West Ham to do way better. It looks like you are punching below your weight in yeah. the last few years. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah. What's going on? Well, uh, for the last couple of seasons, I think there's been quite a lot of disharmony in, in the squad um, because I think it's been well documented that David Moyes, uh, uh, as a manager, was very regimented in the side that he wanted to put out every week. He likes to work with a small squad and therefore a big squad is of no use to him. Mm. Um, whereas with the manager we have now, it's quite the opposite. With Ulan Lopetegui, it's quite the opposite. He likes to use a squad of players and he's been showing that um, quite often to the detriment of our results. But um, I think there there is a plan of action and I'm kind of sticking with it, if you like. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not calling for his head yet. Ah, okay. Um, well, then you are one of those that trust the process, but... Um, <laughs> I'm not quite that deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I believe that there is a process and I'd like to see it because I've, I have high expectations of, of Mr. Lopetegui because, mm -hmm. you know, at Sevilla, he maintained Europa League wins for three seasons. Yeah. You know, um, he also coached the Spanish under-21 side very successfully. Um, and okay, he also that's... wasn't also in charge of the Spanish national team for a yes, short stint. Yeah. For a short stint, but he agreed to go to Real Madrid, I believe it was. There was some kind of wild circumstances where... Yeah. I, I believe it was, he had agreed in principle mm. to go to Real Madrid when his tenure at the national squad had finished. Yeah, before mm. before it finished. And maybe like he was accused of basically not, not being exactly... Yeah, sort of following the the contract. Exactly. Yeah, I not mean, very professional. No, that's right. And and you know that that has been said that he had, he wasn't very professional in that instance. Yeah. Um, and also, it's been said that he wasn't very professional in the way he left Wolverhampton Wanderers. Right. But I believe that a man that has principles must stand by them. Mm -hmm. And if your employer is blatantly lying to you then you have to take action. 
And I believe that that was the case. At what? Um, that's all the reports that I've seen and heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite happy to believe that that was the case. Okay. Um, he, he is struggling a lot at West Ham. Yeah, there is so, no doubt about that. You, you guys, you guys are losing left, right, and center. Somehow you managed to beat uh, another team that has been underperforming heavily, Manchester United. So that was a big win, right? But the latest game we have to unfortunately mention here is uh, your defeat to Nottingham Forest. On paper, you wouldn't expect West Ham to lose, no. but to be honest, if and you look at the it, table it, and the table doesn't done. lie. Sorry. A lot of West Ham fans were saying that they would accept a draw against Nottingham Forest. You know, um, and that just goes to show you the level that we believe we're at. You know? Well, Clive, but they are currently in the third place in the table. So exactly. I think exactly. this is a realistic reflection of where the both where both teams are at the moment i'm afraid well of course yeah but i mean when you look at it from like a, a historical point of view then nottingham forest have always had that team that can get them there or thereabouts yeah that's West true Ham rarely have had rarely. that's true that's true i think what's confused what confuses everyone is that nottingham forest have been out out of the Premier League for a long time, so yes, that they have, and, and they struggled to get back. But that was poor management, poor ownership, and mm. obviously, you know, the the players weren't of the standard that they could or should have been. Yeah, I mean, but we should remind everyone, Clive, that Nottingham Forest are uh, Champions League winners twice, right? Whatever it was called yeah. before the Champions League, they yes. won it twice. So they did two years running. Mm -hmm. uh, so, they came up from what is now the championship, yeah. which was the second division back then, mm -hmm. into the first division, which is now the Premier League. Um, and within two years, they were winning the European trophy. And then the yeah. following year, they backed it up with another one mm -hmm. and a few domestic titles in between. Yeah. Well, um, you know, historically, I, Nottingham Forest. I've always been a club to be cautious of. Well, in this game, you, it seemed like you stood no chance. Although, obviously, there was sort of a moment in the game that made it easier for Nottingham Forest. Yeah, so you we you had one it. player sent off. It was Edison Alvarez in, at the at the end of the first half, and it yeah. was while you were losing. You were losing one nil. You were one nil down. And then this happened. I think it was a real sucker punch, and yeah. I don't think uh, anyone believed from that moment that it would go. Oh, no, I mean, from the moment good. Alvarez was red carded, we all knew that our, you know, chips were down. If you like, chips were down. Um, yeah, yeah, um, and that was it, really. I mean, we, we were fighting an uphill battle the whole yeah. second half, um, and unfortunately. You know, Nottingham Forest had the momentum. They have got some very good players, and they've got a really good coach right now. Really mm. good coach. You know. So, so Clive, tell me what exactly is wrong with West Ham these days? So there might be some injured players, right? That's yeah, well, one thing, but not many, not many. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on? So you okay? Of, of course, you've got one really good player, uh, Mohamed Kudus who got sent off in the previous game, I believe, or something like that. And it was for a really bad, really bad incident. And I think he got like three match, three match ban or something. Yeah. But that's not the only problematic player in your team right now. Then you have got Lucas Paqueta, right? <laughs> What's yeah. going on with him? So he's got... He's well, got in Spanish, he's... Lucas Paqueta, yeah. he has these charges levied against him. The betting scandal. Um, yes, that's correct, Jet, yeah, the betting scandal. Um, whether they are true or not is irrelevant at this point. Okay. Because at this point, the effect of the investigation and everything that goes along with that is affecting the way he approaches his job. You think so, yeah? 
I, I believe so. I absolutely 100% believe that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, nobody can do their job effectively if they're only 30% invested in it. Yeah. You know, he's obviously concerned about his playing career. He's obviously concerned about any money that he may have to return. He's in basically, yeah, you know, mentally, he mentally he's not in the right place. Mentally, no, he's just in the not wrong place. Mm. You know, um, and, a, and a, a classic example of that is a few years back when West Ham were playing against Manchester United, Mark Noble, our captain um, yeah. at the time, was on the bench and he was playing out the end of his career. It was towards mm. the end of his career. Yeah. Um, and we got a penalty in the last moments of the oh, game. Oh, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> Mark Noble was hastily brought on by David Moyes without any warm-up, without any um, pep talks, get out there and score the penalty. So it was, it was in the extra time, it was like the, the, the final minute of the game. Dying moment. His, Mark Noble wasn't playing, but at yeah. the same time, he was a really experienced player who oh, had, um, been known, yeah, had been known for being a great penalty taker. Right? He had been a great penalty record is, is incredible. So, I mean, for West Ham, he has the best penalty record out there. Um, but uh, he stepped up and missed it. That was because of like, preparation, etc., etc. Okay. But it was also the fact that he was completely unprepared mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, his mind was on congratulating the players <laughs> after the game on the draw. Okay. You know? And then he gets told, get out there and win us the game with the penalty. A hmm. lot of pressure. Even yeah. on a really seasoned and experienced player, that's a <laughs> lot of pressure. And therefore, I believe that, you know, Lucas Paquetta, we know he's an outstanding player at times. He's been, you know, he's, he's been quoted as being, you know, one of the most technically gifted players at West Ham. He's okay. a Brazilian international as well. He is indeed, and he's a regular starter for the national squad. Yeah. You know, um, but um, we know that his performances of late have been, you know, yeah. amateur. Yeah, but it shouldn't best. be just him. Like It's it's just a combina combination of factors. It's, yeah, it's of like every, everything is going wrong at West Ham yeah. currently, right? Yeah. It's uh, Lopetegui, I don't know. But I've been watching your games. As, as you know, I have a soft spot for West Ham because of yep. the Czech the Czech players. So yeah, uh, it seems like he he's experimenting a bit too much. Like he, it seems like he doesn't exactly know. Like even even the lineup. Yeah, you you could have accused David Moyes for uh, always sticking to the same starting eleven. He might have been overloading the players. He might have not given enough chance to. The players that deserve the chance. Okay, fair enough. But as you said at the beginning, Lopetegui seems to be the polar opposite of that. And yeah. for some reason, he doesn't play the same ever the same team. And it looks like more like he's searching for that perfect starting eleven. And 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 it's like yeah. it feels like everyone is letting him down. That's how it feels like to me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it could also be looked upon uh, in this way that. He adapts his starting eleven for the team that we're playing and believes that he okay. gets it right. And then his substitutions are as a result of, ah, that player's not performing, I'll replace him. Or I need more up front, so I'll bring these two off and bring them two on. Or yeah. whatever the case may be. That could be the case. However, I don't believe it is. I really but don't. Clive. I believe that you're right. That he doesn't know his best eleven, and even if he did, he probably wouldn't use them every week. But Clive, doesn't that lead to players losing their confidence? Because I don't know. Like if I'm looking at it from yeah, the point of view of Tomas so Socek, someone okay, maybe Jared Bowen will always play. Okay, we can assume that. We can assume yeah. that Mohamed Kudus will always play. But then there are a lot of players who might play or might not play. And if you're Tomas Socek or someone like that. If you don't know if you're going to play that game, like what does it do with your conf? I, Tomasz Sochek doesn't seem to be faced, but okay, maybe someone no, no, no. else, like but, I mean, will, I mean, or the classic example would be actually the other guy, which one? 
Well, he's completely out of team, so like he hasn't. He, well, he, but, he only gets in if Wan Bissaka is injured or suspended yeah. or on international but, duty. But to be honest, guy, things. That would do be. you know I have always been defending the Czech players, like even on some channels on yes, some channels because I I didn't like the way they were treated. But mm. with Vladimir so far, I don't have a leg to stand on because Bissaka has been really good, so. For me, that this is a no-brainer that Bisaka plays over Tsofal. Yes, I would like Tsofal to get a chance. Maybe yeah. in a we could play him in a different position. You could mm -hmm. you could shuffle shuffle then, the team around. You could play then, back, you know, back three. That's one thing that annoys us about David Moyes. He was okay. playing players out of position. Yeah. You know, like Lucas Paquetta out on the left wing, for example. But doesn't that's Lopetegui ridiculous. do it even more now? <laughs> Because he's been shown the way, you know. <laughs> but we've got a perfectly good left winger in um, uh, Crescencio Somerville. Okay. Yeah. The lad we picked up from it, uh, Leeds last season at the end yeah, of the yeah. season. Um, championship player of the year, no, you know, no less. Um, and we got him because he wanted to come to West Ham, apparently. Yeah. Um, and he's this is not perfectly really. good at the job. He's mm. very forward thinking, and he can get back and defend if he has to. But he has got Emerson behind him, Emerson Palmieri, who is a seasoned, established Premier League player. Used to play for Chelsea, every right? European, every European yeah. title football can offer, he has every single one of them. Mm -hmm including the international. The only one he lacks is the World Cup. Okay, that's <laughs> true. Because Brazil have been underperforming. Yeah. All of them. I mean, including players like wan -Bissaka. I mean, wan has been doing his best, and he's probably been, you know, one of the better players for West Ham. I think Ham so. On I his, think so. Any given game. Because he's, watched... doing, he's trying to establish himself in the team and in, in the club. Yeah. And I, I watched my, most of the games, Clive, and I would say Bisaka, Kilman, these two guys Kilman have been the best, player best players. Not, not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Max Kilman's earned his place. And I think Jean-Claire Tazibo has also yeah, it's been all right, know, yeah. put his name down and rather hard because mm -hmm. he's been very good. Yeah. But have you noticed who we keep turning to, though? We keep turning to Thomas Lochek. Hmm? Because he is Mr. Reliable. Because yeah. we know that if we need a box-to-box -box player, pop him on. You know? You know my opinion on Tomaj Socek. You know, I, I love this guy. Like He's, he's a hero for me. We and all do. I, I we respect all do, him. And it's not there just are for better his... players in the club. You know? Are there, though? It but, depends well, how, you de how you define Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. Well, that, because the problem is, these days, right, People love all the all the technical skills and the flicks and the flair and everybody's obsessed with this. It's it's the it's the it's the age of social media. Everybody wants to see the beauty of everything, yeah. including be the beauty of sports. But I thought West Ham were about hard work, grit, determination, never give up attitude, and that's why I was so surprised when when. The West Ham fans, and I've spoken about this with with the other West Ham fans, kind of yeah. turned against Tomaj Socek, someone who embodies yeah, think, these, these qualities. A lot of players, a, a lot of fans have come to the conclusion in their minds that Thomas Socek's time at West Ham is done, mm -hmm. and therefore they're now finding minor faults and creating larger faults with that. If you understand what I mean. I am not one of those. I'm I'm a firm believer that Thomas Ojek is Mr. Reliable. He, you know, he might as well wear an S on his blinking chest for all I care, because yeah. he is, he's like Superman to us. <laughs> you know, when we need a game, a goal in the dying moments of a game, can always rely on Thomas Ojek to be there or to provide it. You know, you to either know score what you it get. or provide. Yeah. It's the same for the Czech national team. You of kind you of do. know what you're getting from him, right? And you know he will yeah. give his... And I was really surprised yeah. that Jared Bowen was given the armband captaincy mm -hmm. and not Thomas Socek. 
maybe because I believe that you know, Thomas Tocek had earned it. I'll tell you what: there are there is a group of people in the Czech Republic who claim that Socek. I, I, I think I think Socek is a great captain, and I like him not only for his footballing qualities, but for for the sort of aura he ex exudes, some sort of sort of leadership yeah. aura. But that's mm -hmm. me, yeah. But there are some yeah. people in the Czech Republic who think that he's too nice to be a captain. So maybe for this reason, he wasn't selected, you know, because he's very nice, right? He's just this gentleman. He he's a gentleman. He but he's also, he, he, he may be very nice, but he's also 99 times out of 100. If a player in the Premier League is wearing a head bandage, it's going to be Thomas Sojak. Because he does tend to put his head where it's not needed at times You're or, right. or where, you know where it's in danger um yeah. so for me he he puts himself on the line hmm. you know but but, but the counter argument and the badge on it you yeah. know the counter argument is that these days you want to have some sort of i don't know a better word than asshole you want someone who is going to use some dark arts and who is going to you know, maybe provoke provoke someone and who will fight. And Tomaj Socek, he will not fight. He's a diplomat. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Maybe, of maybe this is the but, reason, you know. But maybe he's this, a practical I, joker also. He's someone I, I admire and I would I, follow a captain like that. But that's me because I like this sort of attitude. And when I played football, I didn't like to be shouted at. I didn't like these captains who just shouted at you. And that's how others followed them. Not me. I'm different. I prefer this kind of role model, yeah, like to my Sochi, yeah. but everyone is different. And I believe I mean, there are a Noble, lot of... Mark Noble, the, undeniably yeah. one of the greatest captains West Ham have ever had. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the phrase dark arts. Now, uh, to someone like Mark Noble, using the dark arts was things like... Classic example, we had Jesse Lingard on loan. And the first day at the changing room, he sat down... He picked up his phone. Mark Noble told him, if I see that phone in your hand again during training sessions, it's going down the toilet. You see, and, and from that Soch moment on... Sochi wouldn't didn't... have said that. <laughs> no, no. Thomas would have no. said to him, yeah, oh, club rules, you're not allowed to have your phone now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mark Noble, a little bit of the dark art, so I'll put it down the yeah. toilet or something of that nature. Exactly. Whereas, you know, also, if there was an argument to be had, Mark Noble was quite willing and capable of participating or even leading that argument and winning it most of the time. And you, you need uh, that. It's important. Yeah. But I but, think, as you said, um, Thomas Socek is a diplomat. He's a diplomat, yeah. One of the most admired England captains of all time was Alan Shearer. And he mm. was a diplomat. He wasn't a fighter. He was a yeah. big, tough, tough lad, but you wouldn't well, catch when, him fighting. When we say fighter, this is misleading. Fighter as in he's not going to punch someone in the face. He's no. not going to retaliate when somebody stamps on him. He's not He's not going to get a red card even because he knows. He's smart yeah. enough and he, he knows. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I see what, I see what you mean. He's, he's, very humble. he's not arrogant. He's humble enough to know where his limits yeah. are and what he can do. But also, at the same time, he will give give his all. He will fight, right? In 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 a sense of on the pitch, he will he will put in tackles, as you said, put his head in into the uh, area duels and all that. Sometimes even and he'll be the first one in the children's ward at the hospital, yeah. and the last one to leave. Yeah, you true. know, mm -hmm. um, you know that that is leadership quality. Without I doubt. agree. For me, I I would follow that. But I understand yeah. why some people say something else. So I don't have a problem with Bowen. He has been great. No problem. Yeah. But I had a problem with Socek being out of the team. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that it seems like West Ham fans have realized now. I'm watching the channels. And they're not talking about Socek the way they talked about him before. So I, I think no. they've realized that he's not the problem. Because it seemed yeah. like he was being the scapegoat. Yes. So. Yeah, he was. And like yeah. I said... Some, you know, fans believe that his time at the club was up and therefore he's still here. Why is he still here? 
you know, well, we must find fault in him because he's not supposed to be here. That's no. the mentality of some people. You the, know? The, they always said this thing that it's because of Moise loves him, because of Moise wants him, because of Moise, because of Moise. This, this just isn't right. Now we can see that Lopetegui likes him too, right? He, he didn't play this game against uh, Nottingham Forest, but he didn't play only because he was sick, he was ill. He put a message on Twitter that he was sick. So that's why you, you couldn't have him in the team. Yeah, so um, I have to ask you, Clive, about the other Czech player, Vladimir Tsofal. Uh, it seems like you are frozen currently. Are you are you back? Yeah, no, I, I was. It froze, but my yeah. wife has just blinked on and off. So that's yeah. probably why. So when I spoke to the other West Ham fan on this podcast, on the Foodgrish podcast, um, we sort of speculated over Vladimir Tsofal's future as at West Ham, and it seemed that we agreed that Vladimir Tsofal's days are numbered at West Ham, yeah. Which, yeah. which is a shame, but it looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, and you know, like, you know, like as you've probably seen on a lot of the other channels, you know, the, the call, the call now among the fans is let's get another right back to back up Wan Bissaka. Hmm. They're kind of dismissing so foul now. Uh, yeah. I think that's unfair because I still think he's got a role to play. Um, he's produced some the greatest crosses to provide <laughs> for goals and stuff in the last few years, you know. And, you know, and like Thomas Socek, he will get stuck in. He will put his head into places it might not, you know, be best to put. And, <laughs> you know, um, you know, but you know, what we call them is warriors. They're all, they're warriors like Billy Bonds of old. Hmm. You know, like, like uh, Ron Harris at Chelsea, and you know, oh, you know, there's so many of them. Even of more recently, Roy Keane at, at Man United. You Roy know, Keane, I mean, yeah. I know that's not recent, but it's more recent than the ones I mentioned. He's a he's a pundit now, a very famous yeah. pundit. Yeah, cool. Yeah, um, so so yeah. so. I have to ask you about this upcoming game against Everton because how many times ha has this happened? It seemed like it's one of those games that where if the manager loses it, he could be out of the club, right? It could be a game that he needs to win. Uh, I think that is kind of the feeling amongst fans and stuff, but I really don't believe that that's what the club are thinking. Okay. Um, the club have signed him up for two years. Um, and David Sullivan isn't the sort of person to go and waste money and buy him out of his contract, right? There's a phrase for you. He isn't trigger happy. <laughs> there you go. He's not trigger happy. Yeah. If, I mean, look, Lopetegui came in with a minimum fee and decent wages. Okay, mm -hmm. we didn't have to buy him out of a contract or anything like that. Same with David Moyes. The same with Pellegrini. The same with David Moyes before that. The same with Slavin Bilic before that. The same with Sam Allardyce before that. The same. Well, need I go on? <laughs> you know, David Sullivan does not like spending money on the coach or the manager. He'll pay him a decent wage, and he'll give him bonuses, etc. But he won't buy them out of contracts and he won't sack them when they still got 18 <laughs> months of a contract left. So it seems like it's both a curse and a blessing. <laughs> In some respects. So yeah. we've got him until at least next summer, minimum, hmm. and if not the summer after. But if we get European football by any way, <laughs> by miracle, we get European football in these two seasons. He gets another year. Can I say something like, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned this because uh, not not a long time ago, I watched a video on uh, West Ham Network channel, which I believe you are also part of. Um, one of the guests. You're one of you have a show there. You have a show, the old school hammers. You're, That's correct. you're doing yeah, that with you. Yeah. 
with with your mate. So Kiri. Wednesday evening. So if anyone wants to watch that, uh, you appear on this show called um, Old School Hammers, and it's yeah. it's on the West Ham Network uh, YouTube channel. And today I watched a video from them, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the host said an, an interesting thing. He said that uh, West Ham are six points of the relegation zone and seven points of the Champions League places. <laughs> <laughs> so that that just that shows that the, the league is really it's quite even this season. Yeah. It's like any, anything could happen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, it also shows how early in the league we are. Yeah, uh, I mean, look, some people are saying, "Oh my God, we're a quarter of the way through already," and blah 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 blah. Doom and gloom. Woe, woe is you know our fate. No, yeah. I look at it like this. Oh great, we're only a quarter of the way in. We've <laughs> still got three quarters of the season to pick this up. Yeah, you know, I'm more the glass. Half full, full, full rather than half empty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> th there you go. Um, but uh, you know, I, look. Don't get me wrong. I do have a moan about our club and the manager, the coach. Sorry, and his yeah. tactics, etc. Et I do moan. Of course, I do. I, I have every right to. You know, especially if I'm buying a ticket to go and watch it at the stadium. No, which do I you? Done this season, yeah. Actually. Do you have a season? Do you have a season ticket? No, to go no, no. to West Ham games. No, you don't. No, no, no. no. Uh, until they re-employ Gianfranco Zola as the coach, I'm not going to. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about David Moyes? Would you take him back now? <laughs> no, I wouldn't actually. No. And I, um, I was kind of indifferent when he left. I was like, okay. oh, okay, yeah, they have decided it's time. Yeah. I was it was a like joke. That. I'm, yeah. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Yeah, no, that's fine. But it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not going to happen. But if by any stretch it did happen, I would be highly disappointed with the club. Hmm. You know, I really would because it got a little toxic for David Moyes and yeah. the club and the supporters. That's why I don't think they're going to do well, it. Yeah, you wouldn't bring toxicity back to the club. No, 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 no. no. Or, or the, or, or the, in, the instrument of that toxicity. Because that's Correct. really what it was. All of, the, all of that was aimed at David Moyes and his leadership. Yeah. So, you know. All right, Clive. I think we have we have come to an end of this uh, wonderful podcast. Thank you very much. It's always Thank great you. to talk to you because you're so eloquent. And well spoken, and I, I enjoy that as an English teacher who has a podcast uh, about learning English and football. You know, this is exactly what I'm, we I'm, want. I'm actually quite conscious of it, so look, I do make <laughs> a little more of an effort. Are you saying that if you knew this wasn't about English, you would sound like a proper Cockney from the well, street? No, I'm, I'm never a proper Cockney because I was never born in London. Anyway, I was born in Crawley, which is south of london but uh you, well you've heard me talk casually and you know i mean i use phrases that you mentioned before when i've been on your channel you know when i said it, it goes tits up for us and things like that you know <laughs> i've tried to be a little more eloquent than that what was it again it goes tit tits up it's up yeah yeah. Well, let's hope it doesn't go tits up for you against everton fingers crossed all the best to you <laughs> clive <laughs> <laughs> um, and and this is exactly the kind of phrase that I might explain in the language corner, which will follow this this interview. So thank you very much, Clive. All the best to you, and uh, I hope to catch up with you so soon on this podcast or a, another show. It doesn't matter. Yeah, great. And thanks for the invitation. And yeah, no uh, worries. And the Anytime. chat. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep growing the channel as you are. It's great. And uh, you know all of your students mate this is the man this is the man that will teach you and if he can't teach you nobody can <laughs> i wouldn't go that far but <laughs> you know you've lived in england man you know you you know let's you know say, let's say let's say i can i can do the job okay let's put it that way <laughs> well, yeah, but you teach practical english i do yeah you teach yeah. english to people that they can use in in the street you know what? Or, 
in a shop or something. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm actually quite lucky because these days I teach one football manager from the first Czech league. Right. I teach three football journalists and one ex-footballer, a female, which is interesting. A female Fantastic. Footballer. So I hope to get more people from, from the football industry because yeah. I think we... I think I can do a good job because I'm passionate about football and of we course, all, we'll, and we'll always have something. And I can teach English through football. I know how yeah. to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, enough of this self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been too much. So thank stuff. you. Thank you, Clive. No and, problem uh, Catch have a nice soon. one. Have a good one, man. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the Language Corner. In this part of the show, as always you're going to learn something. Hopefully, you will. And that's because I'm an English teacher and, of course, my job is to teach English and you are the learners, right? I know some of you aren't. That's fine. For whatever reason you're watching, you can keep watching. But if you are here to learn something, well, now comes the time for you to learn something. <laughs> and we're going to have a look at a slightly vulgar phrase. So, if you haven't been 18 yet, huh, you should ask your parents before you hear this, because we are going to talk about the phrase to go tits up. First of all, let's explain what tits are. Tits are women's breasts. It's a vulgar way of saying women's breasts. It's a slang way of referring to, you know, breasts. And imagine if the tits go up. I think because we have gravity, tits should be going down. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I think so. So that's a bad thing. If things go tits up, it basically means things go wrong. So at the end of the show, I said to Clive, I hope that things don't go tits up in your game against Everton, which means I hope you guys don't lose again. All right. Whew. Tough stuff, tough stuff to deal with as a teacher. Well, sometimes you have to teach these as well. And I like challenges like these, but of course uh, we are on a dangerous ground here on the YouTube channel. We don't want to get demonetized. Wait a minute. I'm not monetized in the first place. And it gets better. This is primarily a podcast, so people listen mainly. Yeah, it's both a podcast and this gets uploaded on the YouTube channel. But you should know that not all episodes of the Food Glitch podcast are on the YouTube channel. So it's possible that if you are a YouTube viewer, you may have not heard some episodes of the Food Glitch podcast. So go check them out. Anyway, if you guys enjoy this and if you like what I do and if you want uh, me to grow this channel and to grow this podcast, why don't you become my Hero Hero subscriber? That's a way you can really support me. Check out the link in the description of this episode and that's all for today. Thank you very much for listening and until next time, bye-bye.